Hello there. Welcome back to another exciting week of Team Draft Super League. I'm Marshall Sutcliffe. It's my pleasure to be joined here by Dave Williams. Dave, welcome back. What's going on, buddy? How you doing? Oh, I'm good, man. Excited to uh, check this out and get to do this with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're, we're going to get a chance to uh, to watch one of our featured drafters. It's going to be Luis Scott Vargas. That's going to happen a little bit later on. We've got a few minutes to kill here. I just wanted to check in with you, Dave, see how you've been, man. Um, you've been keeping up on the on the whole magic stuff lately. I know you've been pretty busy. Yeah, I mean, it's been a really busy month of July, but I, I never, you know, I, don't, I always keep track of magic. I always am checking magic Twitter, reading the websites, looking at new cards, watching watching Super League. We, we have a guest. Hello. Whoa, look at that. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah <laughs> really honest here. No, but, uh, no, I always, I'm always up to date on magic. I, I don't think I'll ever, like, I, I think I posted something about it and some guy wrote, tweeted me like, oh, you still play? Or when did you start back? I'm like, what the hell? I, I, oh, I never stopped. <laughs> I saw that tweet. You said I never stopped, bro. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you've been keeping up on what's going on in magic. Then I have a very important question for you, Dave. All right. Do you celebrate? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> I mean, not as much in magic because I haven't had any big success worth celebrating in quite a while, but, uh. You know, I've been known to uh, show my emotions. I wear them on my sleeve in poker, cooking on MasterChef. I was kind of the emotional hothead, and, and I, I do in Magic, too. I mean, it depends on, on the circumstance. You know, winning just a random match of the Swiss, yeah, no big deal. But making top eight or winning that round to get your winning in, a big, you know, a big accomplishment. Yeah, I'm, you're going to get some elation out of me. I'm not going to taunt or ever be rude about it, but I am. I might pump the fist or, Whoa! you know, give some – some real excitement. You're going to see that I'm happy when something good happens. All right. So give us the inside scoop. It's you're playing on a draft on Magic Online and you book that trophy. You know, you get that sweet, sweet trophy. Are the hands up in the air? Are you are you dancing or do you just sit down the laptop and go get yourself a glass of water? Uh, it depends on the deck. You know, if it's a deck, <laughs> it's really it's sweet. a bad deck. Like, butter and I just cut through them it's kind of like let's just fire the next draft if it's a piece of work and I had to really finagle my way to that win it's like got it like what happened like oh I, I got a draft trophy <laughs> so yeah. yeah it depends on the circumstance yeah you know for me the, the the biggest possible like rise you'll get out of me is when my opponent does the premature gg oh Oh, uh, and then I beat them anyway, which I think has only happened to me one time ever, because usually they're right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is why it's so annoying. But one time I came back to beat them, and I I swear, I thought about just retiring. I thought, there's nothing left for me in this game. You know, I've reached the pinnacle, <laughs> and I booked that 8-4 win. Yeah, that, 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 that doesn't happen to me very often, but yeah, that gets some some yelling and screaming. And Or if it's, you know, you're more likely to get, which, which is the opposite of real life. In real life, if things are going bad, you know, I don't have any land, or I'm, you might see me, like, kind of look salty or tap my deck, you know, but not nothing too bad. But on, on Magic Online, if no one's around, I'll be screaming, Ah, I'm breaking things. You're not literally breaking things, but you know, I might slam a water bottle on the floor. You oh, get yeah. the negative emotion when you're the privacy of your own home. And no one can see that, but that comes out. All right. So this is, uh, we're kind of wrapping things up here in the Team Draft Super League. It's been quite a season. Let's take a look at uh, the uh, championship month as we see it coming up. Uh, today, we're watching Dem Boys versus Channel Fireball. Dave, I'm going to pick your brain about that matchup in just a minute. But next week, off week. So uh, don't be shocked if we're not here next Tuesday. Uh, we're taking the week off. But the week after that, 22nd of August, is the other uh, semi here. It is Madison. Team Madison versus PGO, the Peach Garden Oath. You're certainly not going to want to miss that one. And then the week after that is the championship match to, to see who gets that well, that big trophy that you see down there. By the way, these are 6 o'clock p.m. Pacific time for each of these, so don't be late. You will uh, you will want to see those. So let's focus in on today, though. We're going to be watching Luis Scott Vargas draft for Team Channel Fireball, but, boy, they've been one of the best teams here in the field so far. Yeah, I mean, they crushed us convincingly uh, week one, and I think they got you guys week two. They did. Uh I would, I guess, wouldn't say crushed. We had a, we came down to the last match, I believe, or something close, pretty close. But they, they, they beat us, and they're good. You know, these guys, they win GPS in real life. They win them in the Team Draft Super League. Uh, they are who I would have guessed, if you'd ask me or my teammates, either the best or second best team in the entire field. So I'm not surprised to see them there, and I'm, I'm expecting big things out of them today. Yeah, I think that you know, if you were to look at individual player slots and just give every player just like a blank, you know, zero to 100 rating based on whatever criteria you wanted for 
for high level magic. I think this team is the number one team. Of course, there's other things that come into play when we're talking about team drafts, teamwork, and uh, you know that kind of thing. But uh, you know, just across the board, these are three of the best technical players you know uh, ever to play. Uh, on the other side of the table, though, is going to be really some some strong team draft players here with Dem Boys, and uh, boy, did they put a whooping on us last week, Dave. It, it hurt, man. We we got five would and it wasn't close. <laughs> like I just I felt like I didn't have a chance in my matches, and then I would check Skype to see how Paul and Kenji were doing, and they were not doing any better. So. You know, those guys can certainly play. This is not going to be easy for Team Channel Fireball. You know, last week I was a little late to the viewing, and I will say it was sad. I got there and it was over. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But last <laughs> week was not the week to be late, man. I'm like, I, mean, I missed it. I mean, I usually can come in the middle because I believe we had one recently that went to like we had a couple. Of, or what, the first one match nine was our match. But we had some good ones. So yeah, one of the PTO yeah. weeks went to, to nine as well, yeah. Yeah, I was in Mexico last week, and I decided to load it up at the pool and check it out and – it was over. So sorry that you guys had to be on the other end of that. Other end of that, but yeah, those guys can draft. They can play some magic. So no, I, I am happy, even though I'm not there. And I think you'll probably agree, even though you're not there. The teams we have in these top fours are really excellent magic players and drafters. So I think we're going to be uh, we're going to be seeing some amazing drafts and some matches. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised to see all these go nine and get the full number of matches. No, I'd, I'd like that. I mean, this is what I'm doing tonight. I, I you know, I wanted to come on. And uh, and get on here just to to introduce everything, but I'm going to be grabbing my uh, my bowl of popcorn and my soda pop here, and I'm going to be watching this whole thing, and I'm hoping for for something great too. Maybe we can take a look at, at them boys as a team uh, to take a look at the the players that are in there. We of course know that it's Alexander Hain, Mike Sigrist, and Steve Rubin. Yeah, there they are. Uh, boy, these are. No slouches here, right? Uh, you know, all, all three of these guys sort of experience their big magic success a bit later. They're kind of the next generation, uh, at least when you're speaking in magic terms, past the Team Channel Fireball, who kind of, they hit their peak somewhere around, you know, 2010, 2011 was when Team CFB was like, wow, you know, these guys are just burst onto the scene and started smashing everybody. And, you know, a few years after that, these three really uh, we're starting to win. You know, we've got a pair of, of Pro Tour champions here in Steve Rubin and Alexander Hain. We've got a player of the year with Mike Sigrist, um, you know, all in the last three to four years. Uh, I remember Alex very fondly uh, because he actually won the first Pro Tour that I did coverage at, which was in Barcelona as Pro, Pro Tour Avison Restored. And uh, he won that with miracles. But yeah, these guys, you know, if you go back for the last five years or so of the PT, you're, you're not going to find a PT where there's not one of these guys doing really well. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, Mike Sigrist is one who I remember fondly many years ago, early 2000s, being around, you know, just money drafting. He wasn't like a big name on the Pro Tour, but I would see GPs and he was cutting his teeth in the money draft circuit, kind of where I was. So even though his success has come late, he's really been around there, you know, drafting. That's what he does. So I'm not surprised to see him having success. And it also gives me hope seeing him later in his career have his magic success sort of come to prominence, which means, you know, once Liliana's off to, to college, I get back in there. It's not too late, maybe. Yeah, no, totally. And I, I remember when Sigrist won, I think it was Grand Prix Washington, D.C., I believe, a few years ago. And I hadn't met him before. You know, he wasn't out at every PT or if he was, I didn't know him. He wasn't on one of the big teams. And I remember doing my winter interview with him and being like, man, that's a really nice guy. Like, I like that guy. I, I'm, I'm glad he won. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, Siki, he's been playing forever. You know, he's a really nice dude. What they didn't tell me was that he's like a world-class player. Like, this was just his breakthrough. He won another GP that season. And then, you know, as we saw uh, more recently, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, he, he won Player of the Year as well. And, you know, Sigris is now just, uh, you know, uh, on some of the best testing teams and he's just considered one of the one of the elite players in the world and yeah man you could do it too like I, you're just you know kind of hovering around there but you know it just takes one big breakout season and then all of a sudden you know you're on one of the top testing teams and and off you go all right sounds like the draft is ready dave let's sit down and check out luis scott vargas drafting on behalf of uh, team channel fireball against them boys <laughs> 